You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Dr. Monteith, we're going to continue with phone calls. But I wanted to ask you, if we know Bayer and Baxter knowingly shipped out HIV, hepatitis blood in their own documents in court, MSNBC's reported it, knowing it would kill the hemophiliacs and others that took the Factor Eight product. This was basically a matter of eugenics. You see, wouldn't the world, if you are a eugenicist uh, who believe in eugenics, wouldn't the world be better off if there weren't any hemophiliacs because then we wouldn't have the disease. They set out to kill the hemophiliacs. They killed almost half of them in the United States. They shipped factor eight that they knew would kill the hemophiliacs to Canada, uh, to France. Well, I want you to elaborate on that, but just to finish the full question. If we know they did that and other companies have done thousands of other things, why do we then trust any vaccines they come out with, anything they say, Bayer worked with Hitler, it's all these companies... I mean, it's so elementary, and then they admit this flu isn't dangerous. Uh, very, I mean, compared to regular flu, 30 some percent of people already have it, didn't even get sick. I mean, just how we, I mean, how is it, why aren't people waking up quicker? Well, what we need to do is simply keep talking and talking about it. I'm mean, sure you're well aware of the fact that Baxter said, you know, Baxter is a massive batch of, of, it, of an influenza vaccine to Europe that actually contains the deadly H1N5 or H5N1 or avian flu virus. Our bodies would fight this off if we don't get infected by it unless they inject it into you. And they were going to give it to millions of people if it hadn't been for the Czechoslovakians who tested the vaccine before it was given and found it killed all the ferrets and then checked the vaccine. They would have killed millions of people. And I'm talking within the last Several months this happened, and Baxter said, Oh, gee, we just have no idea how the deadly virus got in our flu vaccine. Let me ask so you this. Believe it for a minute. This Let me is ask why you. I think that we're moving towards a climax in history. That would have been the greatest uh, criminal act of all time, would have dwarfed anything that Adolf Hitler ever did. And we would have heard on the news that it was a muted, mutated bird flu killing everybody and we would have never known it was baxter but by the Which, grace of god a lab technician discovered it and basically uh this this was in the last couple of months and anybody can check these facts out fortunately we have access to the internet and you can go to your search engine and simply put in baxter uh, the avian flu virus and it was put into the into a flu vaccine well when they would do that and i mean they should have immediately arrested the people from Baxter and put them in prison. We're talking about the attempt to kill millions of people. Well, let me go oh. further, Doctor. Then it came out in the London Telegraph that of 100 homeless that were given this shot, a bird flu vaccine, and told that it was regular flu vaccine, the city, one city in Poland paid them. This happened all over Europe. 21 of the 100 that were tested died. So this is a deadly weapon. And then no one from the vaccine makers got in trouble. They arrested the city officials. Well, I think it's about time the American people... I, I, I honestly believe that the one that they're going to give in Europe is going to be much more deadly than the one they give here in the United States. But I'm not certain of that, and you shouldn't take it anyway because it contains mercury. But you do not know what is in this. I mean, we can go back to the history of vaccines. We can start back, certainly... Back in 1942, when they gave our military a yellow fever vaccine, but they forgot to test it ahead of time, and of course, uh, they got yellow jaundice because it had a hepatitis B. And actually, about 300,000 American troops uh, uh, got the virus. Fortunately, only about 28,000 came down with the disease, and I don't oh. know how many of them died. But and Only 28,000 had their liver eaten. How nice of the government. What people do not know, and this is one of the most carefully kept secrets of modern times, is that there are, and you can go to the World Health Organization website and get the information, two billion people, that is not million, that two billion people have been infected with hepatitis B throughout the world. 
How did they get it? The vast majority of them got from the World Health Organization vaccine immunization program where they just accidentally used dirty needles. Oh. And of course, in China of course that's today, their spin. I saw the BBC article about four years ago where it said in one African country, we don't know why 40-some percent of the women all have HIV and we've had medical tests. A lot of these little 10-year-old girls have never had sexual intercourse. Uh, you know, they still... Uh, uh, have their, I guess, the hymen in place, and then and then the BBC said, "Oh, they must have used dirty needles." The UN inoculators, bull. As you know, doctor, it's very hard to get HIV from a first needle stick. Uh, this was clearly the researchers believe injected into them in the different vaccines they were being given. Unfortunately, I think you're true. Well, here in the United States, you know, basically uh, they gave a an experimental hepatitis B vaccine, and it was about 1960. 76 or 77, to cohorts uh, of homosexuals who volunteered for this. This was a hepatitis B trial, you know, to see if the vaccine worked in New York, in San Francisco, and in Los Angeles. And a few years later, all the homosexuals there started, or most of them started coming down with a strange new disease that turned out to be AIDS. In San Francisco, and we have the figures for it, 75% of the young homosexuals, idealistic people who are trying to stop the spread of, of hepatitis B in their, in their community, 75, 77% of them came down with AIDS, and they're all, almost all dead today. And why did the government use them? Because they were very sexually promiscuous, and it was perfect to use them as the seed vector to spread it. And this is the cover. You say, oh, well, it's their promiscuity that's doing that. And so... Basically, of course, we thought, well, and I will have to admit, I was, I, I could not believe this initially. I thought that, you know, as he'd gone to 77% of the homosexuals, you know, in, who had taken this vaccine, obviously it was going to just explode in the rest of the homosexual population. It was going to get in the heterosexual population, which is equally promiscuous, and it really didn't do it. This, this it was also meant to launch to the global fear-mongering. This virus is designed to kill blacks, and in the United States today, almost half of the AIDS cases are in blacks, and almost half of the people who've died of AIDS are blacks in the United States. And as you said, doctor, they've done the studies, my dad's shown me these in medical journals, uh, he's a physician, that you'll take a black that is less promiscuous in these average actuaries than whites, with the test subjects, and they have a much higher rate of getting it, and they found in the studies, we can tell us about that, we'll keep you longer, we'll take some calls, that it's easier for blacks to get HIV. They, they know how to create diseases that are, that are race-specific. In other words, if you want to uh, infect blacks, they have slightly different genetic makeup, and you can actually engineer a disease, and this is an engineered disease. How do we know it was engineered? Because one of the fellows who was part of the engineering came forward. He was dying of, of pancreatic cancer, and he told a man named Gary Glum the story. And the, 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 actually, the book you know, is called Full Disclosure. In fact, you can go to my website, and we actually have, have, have the front of the book there, and yet all of the links have, have been disconnected. They don't want you to read the book, but the book is called Full Disclosure. You can probably get a copy certainly on, on the, uh, from Amazon, someplace like that. And well, here's a fellow who is part of this whole thing. He's dying. He tells the whole story and totally blocked out by the controlled media because it's too horrible to, for people to believe that they would target blacks to kill off the black population. And I want to say this. I was, listening to, I was listening to XM Left today, the liberal XM channel. I heard two black soldiers in a 20-minute drive into work calling up the, the liberal talk show host defending collateral damage in the million dead Iraqis. And it came to my mind, I said, here are these black soldiers serving the New World Order, thinking they're fighting for America. And meanwhile, Tuskegee experiment, AIDS, this government wants to murder them, and they will go to the grave loving their murderers. And, of course, the thing is that they have targeted the blacks. That's what, of course, why they put the abortion clinics into the black communities. And Look at Obama taking the funding block off for abortions in Africa. And, I mean, people find it difficult to believe that there is a genocidal program, first for the blacks, but next for the whites. And now they're getting around to the white part. And you go into countries like, say, Zimbabwe in, in, uh, in Africa today, and the, the 
average age of a black man, you know, he would, uh, the average man would die at 64. Today, the average age of a black man who dies is 34. They have the life. They've done this intentionally. They've 